If you have a lot of hungry mouths to feed, there's just one place that can help you feed them all. At Southern States, you'll find an unequal variety of nutritional animal feeds and pet foods for just about every kind of hungry animal on Earth, from the smallest appetites to the most insatiable. So if any other store says they have more food for more animals in Southern States, there's just one thing we have to say. Southern States for your farm, home, and garden. Check it out. All our favorites have great low prices, like delicious soft taco supreme and our new great tasting nacho supreme. So run for the border. Baltimore's 24-hour news station. We are WBAL-TV 11. From Baltimore's 24-hour news station, this is WBAL-TV 11 News at 11. But I have people who report uh, police brutality to me who are shot. Arms and legs are broken, concussions, rib damage. That's an attorney for the NAACP talking about what can happen when police go too far. You could end up being a victim, too. Police brutality has certainly been headline news lately because of the incident in Los Angeles last month. But Lisa Salter says there's also been a topic of a three-year NAACP study. Lisa, what is this study all about? Well, what they did is uh, they collected data from each of the counties in the state, and what they've come up with is a profile of those most likely to be targeted. By now, everyone knows what happened to Rodney King last month in Los Angeles. And while it was shocking, state NAACP officials say it's not surprising. They say King fits the profile of the person most likely to run into trouble with the police. Black or Hispanic males, dark-skinned, 15 to 40 years old, 100 to 190 pounds. If you fit that description, the NAACP says you better watch out. It would behoove them to be aware that, that they do fit the profile. And it behooves them to be aware that the police uh, um, probably have made a value judgment about them as people. Uh, that uh, since they're on the policeman's turf at that point, they have to rebut that presumption or certainly uh, be careful. He can't do his job the right way. He shouldn't be, he shouldn't be on the floor. He's playing himself. He's going to beat me up and then beat my little cousin up. I was hit in the back of the head two or three times by the police. These city residents say they have been the victims of police brutality in the last year. Their circumstances may have been different, but they tell similar stories of excessive, unnecessary force. Both fit the NAACP's police brutality profile. But the NAACP's lawyer warns don't be fooled into assuming that those in the profile are the only possible victims. The thing about the profile is it, it shows the prime victim of police brutality in Maryland, but there are a lot more people out there who can become subject to it. The NAACP emphasizes that brutality cases aren't always racially motivated. They say a lot of it has to do with socioeconomic status. A person may be judged solely on his or her appearance, and oftentimes that can lead to conflict. Just out of curiosity, which counties have the poorest uh, reputation when it comes to alleged brutality? What they found out was Baltimore City, probably because it's the largest district okay. that they studied, but followed next by Howard County. And that's a, a kind of a small county, but uh, it shockingly has a a very poor reputation for police brutality. And uh, Prince George's County, mm -hmm. uh, it has been traditionally bad, given a bad reputation, but they've been commended for the most improved record. All right, Lisa Saltos, thank you very much. Pat? An awfully close call for some police officers in Northeast Baltimore tonight as they were arresting two people on drug charges along Asquith Street. Somebody started firing at them. One shot hit a squad car belonging to Housing Authority Police. Another grazed a woman bystander. She was taken to the hospital. We're told she'll be all right. Police flooded the area and mounted a search, but the gunman, whoever it was, got away. Authorities at the city jail are reporting another escape tonight. The inmate involved had been assigned to a work release program and just walked away. His name is Ricky Barksdale. He's 36. Jail officials say he was serving time for assault and for malicious destruction. Sandra Craig broke, uh, finally broke nearly five years of silence tonight on the child sex abuse allegations against her. She's the Howard County woman whose conviction on child abuse charges was overturned yesterday. Our Lorraine Jewett has that story. It was like living and walking through a nightmare. 
That's how 44-year-old Sandra Craig describes her life since she was convicted on child abuse charges in 1987. She and her husband Michael, who now live in New Jersey, are half a million dollars in debt, most of it legal fees. From a financial situation, we've been devastated. Uh, we've lost our school. Uh, the house that was in there had to let go because of foreclosure. Mrs. Craig was convicted of molesting students at her Howard County Daycare Center, but her conviction was overturned because the alleged victims testified via closed circuit TV. Craig says she never would have been convicted if she'd been able to face her students in court. I don't think they could have really sat up there and, and lied and looked me in the face because we had a good relationship. Whether Craig will have another trial here at the Howard County Courthouse is up to the state's attorney after he consults with families of the alleged victims. We talked to the parents of one of those alleged victims who told us they've put the incident behind them and they'd like to keep it that way. The state's attorney has four months to make his decision. Lorraine Jewett, WBAL, TV 11 News. Well, tonight a couple of foot sniffing cases. Yes, I said foot sniffing. One of them is serious, both in Anne Arundel County. Now, one unidentified man is undergoing psychiatric treatment after forcibly sniffing the shoes of a minister and two children. Now, the other police say is a copycat sniffer. He tricked women into taking off their shoes, telling them there may be a sticker in the shoe, which is good for a prize. No matter how much everybody talks about conciliation, those hard feelings between Governor Schaefer and the legislature just don't seem to be going away. With the 91 legislative session over, the governor told reporters today that he wants to put the past to rest. But he didn't stop there. He said the legislature seemed dedicated this year to embarrassing him, and not even the budget is his own any longer. The budget process right now is a disaster. It's being cut, and it's not a governor's budget any longer. It's a legislative budget. Senate President Mike Miller had this reaction. He said the governor is obviously not happy, and the uh, legislators will try to cheer him up. We're going to check in with Tom Tassemeyer, see if he can uh, cheer us up. Some heavy stuff uh, in yeah. the wind tonight. Heavy weather out yeah. west. Not yeah. far away. Moving into the Baltimore area now, but they'll be out of here by 7 o'clock in the morning. Good. A nice day starting off. Partly cloudy skies, 60 to 65. Gusty west winds. We'll have to talk about some thunderstorms, though, coming our way in the next couple minutes, so we'll do that. All sure, right, Tom. Look forward right. to that. Thanks. We might be uh, talking rain here, but they're talking snow in Minnesota tonight. At least two inches of snow. We'll tell you about that when TV 11 News continues. Dishwashers to refrigerators, a KitchenAid will last. Through the years. KitchenAid appliances will last through the years, but these special values won't. Now, on selected models. Through the Sundays on WBAL TV 11 News at 11. This is Hardy's quarter pound cheeseburger. Its dimensions about 64.65 millimeters bun to bun. The patty 12, I must say 12.65 millimeters of 100% thick juicy beef. And for a limited time only, it's just 99 cents. Now we believe there isn't a cheeseburger this thick and this high for this low in the business. So recently we offered all the other fast food restaurant chains half the screen to compare their cheeseburgers to ours. But no film arrived. Obviously, they're afraid of heights. Hardy's quarter pound cheeseburger. It's very high, it's at a very low price, only Hardy's. According to experts, in most areas of the United States, there are just two kinds of homes. Those that have termites and those that are going to have termites. Each year, termites invade over two million homes, causing an estimated one billion dollars in property damage. Will your home be next? Call Terminix. Terminix stops termites. We guarantee it. No ifs, ands, or bugs. Call for a free termite inspection. After solution, please raise their hand. 
This is the United Nations Security Council moving a step closer tonight to a formal truce in the war with Iraq. It voted unanimously to send a small peacekeeping force to the desert to monitor the border between Iraq and Kuwait and to watch over the withdrawal of allied forces from southern Iraq. The, the council may vote tomorrow to declare a formal ceasefire. And now the deaths have started among those thousands and thousands of Kurdish refugees fleeing Iraq. This man has just buried his mother. Relatives say she died of starvation. He is 18, she was just 35. It is getting more and more grim everywhere in the refugee camps. People are scooping up dirty snow to use for drinking water. They keep tiny campfires going for warmth. There is little food. The next worry, what will happen when the snow melts? Mm. Makes you think that you want to take time out to be thankful for the little conveniences yes. that we all take for granted right here. Put in perspective. Yeah. Yeah. Even when it comes to things like the weather, having right. protection from weather that you're talking That's about. That's right, and being able to see it come like we can on the uh, satellite yeah. and radar pictures. And indeed, there is a line of strong thunderstorms about to move through Baltimore. This line of storms uh, that you see developing here on the satellite pictures produced a wind gust of 82 miles an hour at Hagerstown shortly after 10 o'clock this evening. So the uh, powerful weather system that's moving in. Here it is. It's the main center of it. It's up in the Great Lakes now, far removed from the Baltimore area. But that storm center, which is swirling around Michigan, is pushing cold air into the summer-like warmth we had. 91 degrees at the Custom House today, 85 degrees out at BWI. And so when this cold air rushes in and slams into that summer warmth, you see these bright white clouds develop. Intense thunderstorms from uh, eastern Ohio into western Pennsylvania and now into the central parts of Maryland. On the back side of it, it's like wintertime cold. In fact, up around Duluth, Minnesota, over the past 24 hours, they've had snow falling there. So we want to show you some pictures of just how dramatic this weather system is. Up around Duluth, 84 degrees on Sunday, and then snow falling today. In fact, in some scattered areas, there are reports as much as five inches of snow on the ground in Duluth. I checked the ob there, uh, latest weather observation there. Just cloudy now, but a chilly 31 degrees in Duluth with snow on the ground. Now that cold Canadian air that produced the snow up there, rushing toward the eastern seaboard, slamming into the warmth, and so we have the showers and thunderstorms. And again, some of them have been quite big with an 82 mile an hour wind gust over portions of western Maryland. There was some wind damage reported uh, in Garrett County as well as in Allegheny and Washington counties. So a severe thunderstorm watch is still in effect until two o'clock in the morning as this cold air tries to work its way into Baltimore. Uh, everybody from Bel Air down to Washington and back to Frederick under the watch, meaning conditions are favorable for severe thunderstorms until about two o'clock in the morning. The uh, regional radar shows the showers extending all the way across Pennsylvania and down along the eastern slopes of the uh, Appalachians. The actual cold front is still out in Ohio, but most of the activity has developed along this dashed blue line, kind of a um, weak cold front that's jumped out ahead of it, and that's been the focus for the showers and thunderstorms. Let's go in and look at local radar right now, and you can see what's been happening over the past couple of hours. There's the line moving through Frederick and then into the western suburbs of Baltimore. Coming to the east at a pretty good clip, 45 to 50 miles an hour. So there's only about another hour or so of this, and then it'll be east of us, and skies are going to start to clear. So we'll go back to the forecast and show you what we expect to happen as far as the forecast goes. The actual front comes through during the early morning hours tomorrow, and then as it pushes off the coast, the showers end, high pressure moves in, and by tomorrow afternoon, another bright, sunny day. Although not 90 degrees, it will be cooler, because this is the air mass that produced the snow over the upper Midwest. Won't be that cold when it gets here, but it's certainly going to knock our temperatures down from the 90s of the past few days back into the 70s tomorrow. And the high temperatures tomorrow may occur before noontime. As the cold air keeps coming in, it'll get a little chillier, only in the 40s over much of Michigan and Wisconsin. And get even a little chillier here on Thursday. I don't think we're gonna get out of the 60s, but that's pretty much normal for this time of April. About 63, 64 degrees is the normal high. So the transition from summer warmth to normal temperatures is going to produce thunderstorms. And tonight they could be severe. The forecast calls for temperatures to drop into the low 60s the wind's steady out of the southwest at 10 to 20, but in and around these thunderstorms, gusts to 50 miles an hour are possible. For the day tomorrow, a improving pattern. Partly cloudy and breezy, 76 to 82 with a gusty west wind. Tomorrow night, temperatures may dip into the 30s in the suburbs. And then the chilly day comes. On Thursday, just 68 with sunny skies. Partly cloudy Friday and 64. Warming up again over the weekend with a chance for rain by Sunday. So the next hour or two, as the line of storms comes through, don't be surprised if you hear a gusty wind, you see a couple of tree branches swaying back mm -hmm. and forth. It can be kind of uh, rough out there tonight. All right, Tom. Be well advised. Thank you, sir. Okay. Very much. If you are the parent of a school-age student, I hope this doesn't happen to you. Some 500 students at Roland Park Middle School will not be allowed back to school tomorrow without proof they've gotten their measles shots. Now, there's been one confirmed case at the school, and city health officials want to make sure the disease does not spread. Now, measles shots will be available to students, but only 
only if they can provide a note from mom and dad saying it's okay to be immunized. Well, tonight the community said thank you to the driving force behind the United Way for the past 11 years. Alan Cooper served as president of the United Way. There he is, his granddaughter on his lap. Under his guidance, the agency brought in over $325 million. Among those attending the event this evening, Governor Schaefer, station manager and department heads from WBAL-TV, and friends wishing Alan Cooper the best as he heads up human resources for the United Way in Alexandria, Virginia. A wonderful time was had by all. That's good. Coming up, the Soviets are pulling out of Poland. We'll show you. After almost a half century, the Soviets going home. Most stories more after this. We'll be right back. How does Jeep celebrate 50 years of discovering America? By making it easier for you to do the same. Because after 50 years, there's still no better way to rediscover the place we call home. Get the advantage at your local Jeep and Eagle dealer. It's Macy's two-day sale for great savings and values. Take an additional 10% off jewelry already reduced 20 to 50%. Men's dress shirts 20 to 50% off. Sony remote camcorder only $899. Barberware 10-piece set just $79.99. And 25% off women's shoes. It's store-wide savings too good to miss at Macy's two-day sale, Wednesday and Thursday. Macy's, we're a part of your life. If you see news happen, call our tip line at 467-1111 or 1-800-677-WBAL. The problem with most weeds is they have unusually deep roots. And if you don't pull up the whole root, the weeds will grow right back. So this year, try Scott's Turf Builder plus two weed and feed. You'll get a great lawn without weeds or your money back. From Scott's. Using Anderson windows with high-performance glass, you can have the windows you want and still keep your home comfortable, no matter what the weather. In fact, Anderson windows keep your home so comfortable. Hey, boy. Want to go for a walk? You may never want to go outside again. Get the book that's filled with Anderson window and patio door ideas. Call 1-800-426-4261 to learn where to get your copy of the Anderson Idea Book. Eight people killed today in a mid-air collision between a French Air Force bomber and a French Navy helicopter. Wreckage from the disaster is scattered all over French farmland tonight. French military officials still aren't sure why that collision happened. Meanwhile, Secretary of State James Baker met with Palestinian leaders in Jerusalem today. Among the topics discussed, an Israeli initiative to discuss peace with Arabs, the U.S. and also the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union, by the way, is pulling out of Poland. These Soviet soldiers are among the first to leave. 30,000 more will follow. Soviet soldiers have been on Polish soil since the end of World War II. The withdrawal should be complete by June. Just a little electronic trick there to make sure you're still watching. Word today of the death of one of Baltimore's better-known businessmen, Charles Thurgood Burns. He was the founder and chairman of the country's biggest black-owned supermarket chain, Super Pride. The company spokesman says Burns died in his sleep on Sunday of a heart attack. He was 76. It is getting more and more expensive all the time, the cost of putting a child through college. It is the subject tonight of um, the MoneyWise report from WBAL's financial analyst, Julius Westheimer. With college tuitions going up every year, many people ask how to put away enough money to pay those huge and growing bills. One way is through zero-coupon bonds. Now, zero-coupon bonds pay you zero income during the life of the bond, but they grow rapidly in value through the years. For example, using a 7% income figure, you'll have $10,000 in 15 years if you invest only $3,600 now. For 10 years, if your child is older, you'll need $5,000 to get $10,000 at college time. There are two types of zero-coupon bonds. 
One type is a zero coupon treasury bond, which you buy from a bank or a broker, not from the government. Another type is a zero coupon tax-free municipal bond. Tax-free zeros are pretty scarce, so make friends with your bond dealer. See you tomorrow morning at 6. For Money Wise, I'm Julius Westheimer. Jerry's up next with sports with absolute proof that there is life after 40 and 50 and, and 60. Yeah, and 70. And it just carries right on through to the 80s. As long as you're willing to dare a little bit, as in dare to fly, don't go away. We'll be flying right back. Come on down and treat your family to the best of summer. Sand, surf, sun, and fun. It's all waiting for you. Capture an ocean memory in Ocean City, Maryland. Ocean City, here we come. Dishwashers to refrigerators, a KitchenAid will last. Through the years. KitchenAid appliances will last through the years, but these special values won't. Now, on selected models. Through the years. Tom Tasselmeyer's forecast has the seal of approval of the American Meteorological Society. With the Oldsmobile Toronado's advanced engine and suspension, some look at it solely as a driver's car. And with a tastefully refined interior like this, some look at Toronado solely as a personal luxury car. But they all agree with Toronado's uncommon design. They just like to look at it, period. Well, when you, when you have a son like Patrick, anything is possible with the stable. Or a daughter, Nicole. Because Nicole and Patrick, they, they love to fight. The fight. And the chair will be used as their shield to block the other child. It's, it's going to be abused just by being there. Nick? Oh. Nick, what are you going to do with that chair? I'm going to put it in there. I'm going to put it on Patrick's chair. Nicole, put it there. Jerry's here now with sports. And uh, some baseball notes. Baseball is officially underway, and everybody's together, everybody's working. The regular ups back on the diamonds tonight, so everybody is official. It is 91 complete. Now, the Birds had the night off, but tomorrow it is the Orioles and the White Sox, the sequel, tomorrow night out at Memorial <laughs> Stadium. This afternoon, good note, Ben McDonald threw in the bullpen for about 15 minutes. He says the elbow feels good, and Ben is scheduled to come off of the disabled list on Sunday. Toronto and Boston, two teams you figured to finish the season running 1-2. Well, right now, Cito Gaston right there, the Blue Jays manager, is running 1-1 one and one with Boston. Joe Carter, bottom of the first, sneaks one into the outfield. Harris finally catches up to it, not until Devin White scores, and things looking good for the Blue Jays. Bottom of the seventh, tied at two. Carter again, a big stroke to left field. Greenwell back to the wall, has it, loses it, has it, and then finally drops it. Two come in to score. And they were the pivotal two as Toronto beats Boston 4-3. to three, So they are now both 1-1, one one, two games into the season. Cleveland, a winner over Kansas City, 2-1 to one this afternoon. And a couple of games just getting underway out west. Former Towson State pitching star Chris Nabholtz with the start tonight for the Expos. Rain delay tacked about two hours onto Nabholtz pregame jitters. But this is not a guy you should keep waiting. Expos in Pittsburgh, a town that does not believe in a high-tech water removal system, but they finally got the job done after two and a half hours. You figured Navholz would have been a little stiff by then. Figure again, especially if you are part of the Pirates' big payroll team. Andy Slyke, sit down for swinging at cur uh, curveballs. Andy Van, Barry Bonds, he's about a $3 million player. Mm, same pitch, same results. Sit down, young man. Don Slot, I think he tips in at about a million bucks a year. Mm, not even an effort. Bye-bye, Don. You see the theme establishing here? Bob Walk, Nabholt's opponent on the mound, the Pirates pitcher. I think you uh, can probably guess what happens here. Bye-bye, Bob Walk, as in walk back to the dugout. Nabholt's four strikeouts so far through five innings.
has a one-hitter going, and the Expos in control in Pittsburgh in the sixth. Yes, the preposition of the day was in today on Sesame Street. Philadelphia, no can do against the Mets. They go down two to one in ten innings. St. Louis spoiled the Cubs home opener four to one. The Redbirds over the Cubs, no can do in Atlanta due to rain. And San Fran and San Diego just getting underway. Now the Caps even up their playoff series with the Rangers tonight. They needed this one. It ties the best of seven set at two apiece. Full house at the Cap Center. Definitely a home ice advantage. The Caps knew if they lose tonight, they are almost out of the playoffs. But the crowd kept the Caps in it, and the Caps took over here. Tip at the assist. Dale Hunter falling down the backhand, and it's in turn on the red light and put the Caps in a 1-1 tie. Alan May, not a guy who has delivered a lot of goals this season, but delivers a key one right here in front of the net. That proved to be the winner. Washington ties it up at two apiece, 3-2. to two. Game five of that series will be Thursday in New York. Now, without a doubt, the hardest question for any athlete or sportscaster to answer is, when should an athlete retire? <laughs> oh, so he's going to ask us, huh? Exactly. Okay. I think George, you guys are George Burns is somewhat of an athlete. He's 95, so, so 100. Uh, yeah, I subscribe close. to that theory. You retire when you die. <laughs> I would just say uh, age 72.4. Actually, it's higher. These guys are closer. I, I, I say <laughs> Monia Joyce is, is somewhat of an expert. She proves that you really are never too old to be an athlete. Monia is 86. And no, she is not wearing out-of-fashion clothes. That's a sky jumper suit. Sky jumper as in you and me, big boy, we gonna fly. Jumped out of a plane today with an instructor, younger fella, don't you know, to celebrate her birthday and to promote staying active in older age. Monia and her guide landed together. Huh. Won't the neighbors talk about this? Matter of fact, I think next year I will do a solo. All right. <laughs> Go for it. On my birthday, huh? So at 87, she means solo. This lady's into it. She means she's going to fly the plane by herself, jump out by herself, and just take care of everything by herself. Land the plane, too. <laughs> Shoot the own video. You know, she'll probably be here telling you about it in another year. I this like lady's her. got some spunk. Like All right. What, what, what do Tom and I get for getting the answer right? Yeah, that's what we want. You get to jump out of the plane with Monia next year at 87. See, but if it was a price of right, they would have been overbid, you know. Yeah, you're <laughs> right. You're right. So, uh, disqualified. You're jumping. Thank you very year, much. Right? And the winner. It's, uh, in fact, we all want to be winners yeah. weather-wise, but there's right. some heavy weather going on in Carroll County right now. There is we know indeed. That. Uh, all across the Baltimore metro area, big showers and thunderstorms moving through now. Just checked in. There was a report of some hail down around Dulles Airport in northern Virginia. So a severe thunderstorm watch is still in effect technically until 2 o'clock in the morning. Another couple hours of it until we'll be in the clear. And then by morning, improving weather conditions. So from now until about 2 o'clock in the morning or so, be on the lookout for gusty winds, maybe 50 mile an hour wind gusts, some small hail, heavy downpours, and uh, in general, just what we would expect with some big time spring thunderstorms. By also, 2 o'clock in the morning, we'll be in the clear. Also have some reports of some limbs down, scattered power outages in the, in the uh, suburban counties to the yeah. west and north. That is the news for this Tuesday night. Thanks for being here, everybody. Have a good night tonight. Stay safe. We'll see you all tomorrow night. Stay dry, too. Good night. Good night.